that we know where the volcanoes are in the world, now the question is, well, what, what are they like? What kinds of volcanoes are there? Well, guess what? There's more than one type of volcano in the world. And so we want to look at them. And also, the second thing we want to talk today about is um, uh, something called a topographic map. Topographic map. It's a way to look at um, uh, the world using um, lines and things. And you'll see. And that helps us to understand volcanoes as well. So that's where we're headed today. So let's have at it. Well, let's start with the geo words. Hey, so these are the geo words we're going to do. And I'm going to show you quick pictures. So let's do something a little bit different. I'm going to have the behavior to talk today. Uh, I'm going to show you some quick pictures, and I'm going to define them, and I want you to define them in your own words. And I also want you to draw a picture. So draw a picture of the thing. It doesn't have to be like Mr. Michelangelo. I want you to draw a decent picture for each word. Okay, let's start with a contour line. Hey, what's a contour line? So what I have here is a topographic map. And the contour lines, if you see here, they are lines of equal elevation. So if we look at this line that I'm trying to tracing, whatever, this is a line of equal elevation on a topographic map. Okay, that's a contour line. To do a contour interval, that is the distance, the elevation difference, where we're talking about going up or down, like a, up a mountain or whatever. So if I have a line here, that's a contour line, and this is a contour line, and say, let's say that this line is uh, uh, 8,000 feet. Okay, and this line here is 8,050 feet. Okay, guess what? The contour interval. The contour interval is the distance for each line. So in this case, it would be 50 feet. So that's the contour interval, and that's how you would figure that out. So each of these lines, I, we aren't zoomed in on this one, but we could figure out what that contour interval is. Okay, next picture is a topographic map. So here we have a topographic map, okay, and you can, it's a, a total map of all the contours. So it is a map that contains all of the contours, in the, the contour lines, and then he have a particular contour interval. We'll learn a little bit later. The, if the lines are really close together, that means it's very steep. So if I'm looking at this map right here, let me see if I can find a super steep location. Probably right here, we have a very steep location right here, because the lines right in here are very, very steep. But if you see a contour interval down here, and then another one that's all spread out like here, that's the same contour interval as this one right here. So this is rise, this is steep right here, and this is, well, it's a basin of a river. This is the Colorado River. And as the Colorado River goes through, it's, it's a valley, and it's a flat valley here, but it's surrounded by cliffs, this would be, okay? All right, let's look at the next one. Hey, a shield volcano. Okay, there's different kinds of volcanoes. Now, a shield volcano is a volcano that has gentle slopes, like a warrior shield, hence the name. Shield volcanoes are common <coughs> in ocean hotspots like Hawaii and Iceland. The base of a shield volcano is huge, but because of the gentle slopes, many people think they are not very large. Shield volcanoes actually take up much more land area than other types of volcanoes. The island of Hawaii is one volcano with different vents on top, and it goes all the way to the ocean floor, all the way down to 14,000 feet. So let's take a couple other pictures. So here is um, uh, Hawaii. Notice it's not very steep here. The, uh, the shield volcanoes are not, uh, their slopes are not steep, they're very gentle. Okay, gentle, gentle. And here's another picture of one from space. I think this is the one in, um, on Mars, actually. So volcanoes don't just occur on the Earth, but they can appear on Mars. The second type of volcano is called a composite volcano. Now, a composite volcano is, are what most people think of when you think of a mention of a volcano. They have very steep slopes and are very explosive. And they've been built over time. Mount Fuji, Mount St. Helens. Uh, Mount Rainier, Mount Ridabout are some examples of. This is Mount Fuji right here in Japan. And they can explode. So here's one exploding. Okay. And here's one exploding from space. That's your typical one. All right. And then lastly, a caldera. The caldera is an interesting thing. What does a caldera do? Well, a caldera forms um, when a large composite volcano, like Mount St. Helens, ex um, explodes and it empties the magma chamber. Then there's no longer anything to hold the top of the mountain, so it collapses, forming a huge hole in the ground. Now, Crater Lake in Oregon, which is pictured here, um, is a classic example of a caldera. It formed when Mount Mazma 
Mazama. M A Z. How do you pronounce it? M A Z A M A. Mazama. Mount Mazama blew up and collapsed. The top filled with water over many years and has no outlet, and therefore it made a this beautiful blue color that we see here today. Okay. And you can kind of see how this would work, the collapse of, a, of, a, of one of these types of things. As it, it empties the chamber and all the ash goes out right here, it collapses because um, there's nothing in there. See, this is open, and it collapses, and it creates the caldera. Actually, interestingly enough, there's a caldera not very far from where we are at here in Woodland Park, Colorado. So if you're watching this from somewhere else, um, actually, you know what? Let's watch a short video clip where I show where we have this. Volcanoes. Here I am at the top of Wilkerson Pass, just about 20 miles to the west of Woodland Park. Now, uh, if you aren't uh, from Colorado, um, it's up in the mountains. And I'm at the, the top at the rim of an ancient volcano. Um, I want to show you this. I'm going to grab the camera here. And I want to show you this huge, ancient, actually super volcano. And what we can see here is mountains way, way, way off to the west. We're looking to the west. And as I pan, we can see these mountains way, way off to the west. And you kind of see a flat land down there. That flat land, flat land, that flat land is the caldera of an ancient super volcano that when it exploded, destroyed most of the United States. Um, so super volcanoes are one of the most powerful things um, in all of the world in terms of disasters. And so it stretches, this caldera, or this ancient caldera, super volcano, stretches probably 40 miles in diameter. So this is a huge swath of land, oftentimes, or not oftentimes, it's called the South Park area of Colorado. Rules. What makes a condis? Very cool caldera. Here's a picture of the Amok caldera from, uh, in, I don't know, you was it looks like June 2007. This is a caldera. Look at this thing. It's huge, okay? It's 500 to 800 feet, uh, or meters actually, deep. 8 to 10 kilometer diameter. All right, 8 to 10 kilometers. This is probably, you know, mile-wise, that's about 8, uh, no. 10 kilometers is 6 miles. So this is, you know, this is uh, 6 miles right here. That's a big distance, okay? That's the diameter of this caldera. And it's collapsed. All the magma at some point has shot out. This is one of the most active volcanoes in the Aleutian Islands up in Alaska area. So pretty cool pictures here, aren't there? And then we can see the result. This is the classic picture of Crater Lake right here. Um, this is that Mount Mazma, or Mazama, or however you pronounce it. And then this is, there's an island in the center, which is intriguing. They've got one island. Very deep. I've been there once. It's an amazing place to, to, to go be. To be. Hit a book. And here is a, a sort of a computer rendition of what uh, Mount Mazama looks like. Okay, so let's do some more content. Let's talk about some contour. Okay, back here. All right, first of all, when we're talking at contours, now we're talking back to, back to the topographic maps. Um, some rules that you understand is that lines rarely cross. So if I've got a topographic map and I've got lines of equal length, see here I'm drawing lines like this, these lines will rarely cross. And each line represents a particular um, amount of elevation gain. All right, so if we kind of look at this map that I've drawn right here, so they rarely cross. Now they're not seen, I might have had them kind of come close to crossing. Now when they would cross is when you have like an overhanging cliff, which is very rare, so it's not something you're going to see very often. Okay, and so what you've got here is this would be, let's say this is 8,000 feet, and this is 8,000 and uh, say 20 feet, so the contour interval would be what? That's right, it'd be 20 feet! 20, 20! Can you say 20? And this would be 8,040, and this would be 8,050. And actually, every fifth, let's go do one more in here. Um, every fifth line is darker. Now, I didn't really draw it that way, and that kind of helps you to understand. So what we've got right here is it's getting steeper and steeper. So this would right here would be a mountain right here I've drawn. Okay, and this, you know, we can see a hill going up. Now, we, right here, Right in this pot right here, this would be very steep. A really steep little cliff would happen right there. And the steepest part of this, on average, is right there. And down through here, what we've got is we've got um, more a gentle slope. So if I was to uh, try and walk to the top of this thing, I would probably walk um, right through here because this, um, this is going to be the gentlest slope. This would be the steepest slope over here, except we have a really uh, steep slope there. Now, like I said here, the closer together they are, the steeper the slope. All right, so if you've got a, a, a topo map where they're really close together, you see I'm getting them really close together right here, 
Each of these lines, remember, represents an equal amount of elevation. And then, and then I do this. So I've got a steep slope. All right, so this is steep. Yeah, you know, and we could, yeah, there you go. And these will all extend off like this. So this is how we do topographic maps, okay? So that's steeper slopes. They rarely cross, okay? Now, if you have a hole in the ground or a closed depression, these are marked with tick marks. So let's say that I have a, well, let's take a volcano. So let me draw a contour map of volcano. You should be, like, drawing these. They don't have to be exact. So let's say I've got a volcano right here, all right? But then I've got a caldera that is in the center, and it's a depression. Notice I have tick marks. All right, and so what this volcano would look like if I were to draw pictures, it would go like this, and then you would have the depression. This is what I'm trying to draw. It would look like this. This would be the, the picture of the volcano right here that would look like this. Actually, we should go back and say, what would this last one look like? This one over here would just be, you know, uh, a steep volcano. All right, where this spot right here is equal to this spot over here. Do you see that? So that's how you deal with depressions or holes in the ground. You use tick marks. Now, the index lines are darker. So what we would do is that um, it's hard to draw this. I'll try and draw it. You have a line like this. I'm trying to draw it like a soft. And they're usually every fifth. So one, two, uh, three, four, and then the fifth one. Actually, then we would see how it's darker now. So I got a mountain right here, and actually this middle one would also be dark. I'm not sure if five in between, but you'd have a darker one. And then that's kind of how you would do this. You have dark and light, and these are called the index lines. And so oftentimes what you'll say, they'll say that this is 8,000 feet here, and this is uh, 9,000 feet. And they won't put lines, these lines in here, they won't put a number on them. And then you'll just have to sort of figure out, well, every fifth line, if it's 1,000 feet, it's 200 feet or whatever like that. You just have to figure that out uh, by dividing.